Good day, Mamati Baboons. We are back in our factory walkthrough. In the last episode, we just started to produce green science and we also finished our jumpstart base. But today, it's time to get serious. What we did until now is nice and allowed us to quickly produce some essential items and research. But now we need to start to build a base that's going to be scalable and clean. So to do that, you can see on the map, I have marked where we are going to build the base with stone bricks. And this is to make sure we keep things clean. You absolutely not have to do that, but it helps. I also already placed some poles and some raiders. And how are we going to design our base? There is in fact many ways you can design the base in Factorio. You can have no design and then you can end up with a spaghetti base, meaning a big mess. You could also have a train base, but it is in general more complicated to build and it's in general for mega base. In our case, the simplest thing to do is going to build a bus base. So what is a bus base? Well, simply, we are going to have all our components like iron plates, copper plates, gears, and then other circuits and other components in the middle of the base. And then around that bus, at the top and the bottom, we will have the actual assembling machines, research, and smelting operations. So we have these 50 by 50 squares. The bus will go through the squares in the middle. And then at the top, I'm going to have iron copper smelting. And later we'll also get iron smelting there. So I will need 100 by 100 square. It will take four squares in total. And at the source, we are going to have copper smelting. So same thing, it's going to take 100 by 100 tiles because we are also going to smelt stones here. And then as we progress east, we are going to produce more and more complex components. So at the beginning, we are going to start with iron gears and circuits. Around here, it's going to probably be science. And for the rest, we will see later. All right, so how are we going to build our bus? You want to build it in a way that it's easy to take components from it and also easy to put back components into it. And the major limitation to do that is going to be the size of the underground belt. So currently with the yellow belts, the underground belts can only go underground four tiles away. You see? So that means at the beginning, the lanes on the bus are going to be grouped four by four. Now, because I want this base to be scalable, I want to make sure I put enough belts for the component I am building even though I'm not using all of them at the moment. So for example, for the copper plates, I'm going to want four belts and same thing for the copper plates. And that's because we are going to use a ton of them during our playthrough. And you might wonder, how do I know that? How do I know that I need four lanes of copper plate and four lanes of iron plates? Well, unfortunately, that's just experience. And I only know that because I made a mistake to don't put four lanes before. And my base was severely limited later on when I tried to scale things up. In fact, the first thing we need to do is to scale up our power generation. It seems fine right now, but it's because it's not smelting anything. Because I did a few raider and each raider consumes 300 kilowatts, we are not producing enough electricity. At the same time, let me choose a research. What are we going to take? I think electronics is a good choice. It's not going to unlock any new items, but it's a prerequisite for a lot of research. So you see, we consume too much electricity. So let's build a few boilers and steam engines. And I am going to double our production. Going back to base design. When you talk about bus base, there are two kinds of them. You can have a bus base where you only build on one side of the bus. So in our case, it will be, let's say, we just build north. And it is easier to build because it requires less planning. You can just build as you go. And in the end, it will be longer, but that's okay. And the other option, and this is actually what we are going to build, is to build a two-side bus base, meaning we are going to build at the north and at the south of the base. The difficulty of this approach is that you need to know the size of your bus beforehand. So as I said earlier, here in our case, the space allotted for the bus is going to be 50 tiles, and I think it's going to be just enough. By the way, you might wonder why 50 tiles? Why not 60, 70 or 80? Well, that's something you are going to understand very quickly when we are going to start to build robots. It will all make sense at that time. I would really recommend that if you go with a modular design and draw squares on the ground, that you stick with multiple of 50. All right, we have enough power now. Just to be sure that we have enough coal, I'm going to put down some more miners. Here we go. Let's go back to our bus. So for this episode, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to beat the smelters at the north and south of the base. I'm just going to reuse what we have from the jumpstart base. So let's take the copper here. 
and let's drag that to the belt. Let's do the same thing with iron. And now I would like to explain a few things, some concepts important in Factorio. It is hard to balance belts. When you start to have four lanes like that, what's going to start to happen is that you are going to start to draw more components from one lane than from the others. And in the end, what you will see is an empty lane and three full lanes. And that's not efficient at all. What you want is something balanced on the four lanes. So when we want to balance things between lanes, there are several designs, mostly with splitters. So if you want to balance one belt into four belts, you can just put three splitters like that, and that will do the trick. This one is very simple. And this is what we call balancing the outputs. Another issue that we'll encounter is that components are going to be drawn faster on one side of the belt than the other. So to give you an example, what you might see, if I place an underground belt like that, so here I'm just recreating the problem, sometimes you will see that. And this can happen for many reasons, but mainly when you are trying to do mixed belt. So sometimes you will have this situation, and what we want is to put back this single lane into the two lanes. So how to do that? For one lane, it's fairly simple. You just put a splitter, let's see. You put another splitter just after the first one here. Then here, you put the two lanes together, that way. And then you put a last splitter here. There are probably more compact designs, but this one is simple to build. And you can see if I drag the belt, it takes the one lane input and put it back on the full belt. And even if one lane is full, it's going to continue to draw from the lane. So that's what we call an input balancer. So to summarize, we have output balancers, we have input balancers, and there are even some designs that do both, input and output balancers. So let me remove everything. And now I am going to show you two balancers that we are going to use through the game. And don't worry, you don't have to remember them. I'm going to put them in our factory book, so they will be available in the description below. I need more space. And let's see, is a 4 lane to 4 lane output balancer that is easy to build? I think this one is well known, a lot of people use it. You first put two splitters that way, another splitter just behind. And then we need to put a splitter in the middle here. No, I made a mistake. We first need to put an underground belt that way. Then we put the splitter in the middle. We put another underground belt. And then we just need to drag belt around like that. And finally, we need to put two splitters at the end. Now I'm going to show you that it works. So I'm going to make the bus longer. So of course we just have one belt, but if we would put four lanes, it would also work. And so you can see as the plates go through, they are balanced on all the belts. So this design is great because it's just four tiles wide. However, the issue is that it's not an input balancer. So let me show you. If I put a belt with only one lane. It's only going to stay on that lane. So that's why I'm going to show you another design. It's going to be a four lane to four lane but it's going to be both an input and output balancer. So let me remove everything. At the same time, we can select the next research. Ooh, yes, I want these fast inserters. The inserters we have right now, the, the yellow one, are quickly going to become a liability. They are too slow. So this one is going to be a little more complicated to build, and it's not for me. I don't remember where I saw this design first, but I really like it. So it starts the same with the output balancer. We put three splitters that way, but now we need to put belts out that way. Let's see. Yes, this is right. Then we want to put two other splitters this way. And the part I'm going to work on here is the part that is going to balance the input. So to balance the input, we need to put this underground belt this way. And 
and also underground bed that way. And then finally, we just need to put three splitters at the exit. So let's see if it works. So as we can see, if we put a full belt, it balances well. And now let's see if we put a half belt. I need more space on the belt. And yes, they took the full half belt and put it on the two lanes. Great. So the obvious drawback of this one compared to the other one is that it takes more space. It is six tiles wide instead of four tiles wide, but it can still be put on the bus without problem. And with these two separators, my friends, we have all the design that we need to start to build our base. But that's going to be something that we start to do in the next episode, where we are going to go back to where we are with the jumpstart base. We are going to build back copper and iron smelting, and also iron gear and circuits production. But this time we are going to smelt and produce these items at a much higher rate. Because what we are going to shoot for for this base is somewhere between 50 and 100 science per minute. And there is no way our jumpstart base is going to support that. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see more Factorio content, don't forget to subscribe and add a like. And see ya!